Hey, Golden Eagles, it's time to talk. I'm your host, Adrian Bennett de Avila, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Marisa Vasquez, Josh Latona, and Richard Zuhl. For those of you who don't know, I'm the sports editor for the University Times and the station manager for Golden Eagle Radio. Josh is the entertainment managing editor for the University Times and the programming director for Golden Eagle Radio. Uh, we're also joined again by Marisa Vasquez, the editor-in-chief for the University Times, and Richard Zuhl is the news managing editor for the University Times. Time to Talk is a show that brings together Golden Eagle Radio and the University Times under one umbrella to discuss campus news and issues, campus sports, entertainment, and anything else that connects back to Cal State LA in some way. For our premiere episode, we'll be discussing coronavirus and some of the ways in which it has impacted our campus community. And as you can tell, we're not exempt from that either. Coronavirus has actually affected the way we're doing this podcast right now. Normally we'd be recording in the GR studio, but now we have to do this podcast via Zoom, maintain social distancing. Now, with all that out of the way, all that fun stuff, I want to transition into our first topic, the cancellation of commencement. I know we've been covering this at the University Times a lot, and I want to get your guys' thoughts on it. Um, Marisa, if you want to lead us off as the editor-in-chief for the University Times, go for it. Yeah, so um, commencement is uh, for the uh, spring 2020 commencement essentially canceled. Um, there's no say on whether or not it's going to be uh, postponed to uh, fall 2020 um, is mainly because I don't I don't know if uh, the school knows how long this uh, pandemic is going to last um, and I think that's the hesitation behind it but um, there is the ASI direct the ASI um, president uh, Jacqueline Acosta who is um, trying to talk with Covino uh, William A. Covino our president to see if she can get it postponed to next semester. Um, so there's no word on whether or not that's going to happen, but I know a lot of students are very disappointed, especially the first generation students, uh, first students to walk across uh, the stage for their family period. Uh, their families are disappointed and that they themselves are disappointed in that as well. Um, Cause there's, you know, students work years to make sure that they can um, have the opportunity to do that um, and end it ceremoniously. Um, so yeah, it's been a lot of, a lot of upset, uh, seniors, rightly so, but at, at the same time, a lot of them are saying that they can't, they understand why it's happening. They understand, um, why it's been canceled. Um, but the upset is very clear. Um, yeah. Richard, do you have anything to add on to that? Yeah. And <clears throat> well, I mean, you essentially captured of the whole essence, but uh, to uh, uh, elaborate more on what ASI President uh, Jacqueline Acosta is doing, she's not only speaking, uh, to, or at least in some form or another, communicating with Covino about this, she's also gathering um, consensus, grievances from uh, seniors that were meant to walk on stage to uh, gather some input on that. So she's uh, trying to pull together some community voices uh, on this matter. So yeah, I mean, on a personal note, I myself was expecting to walk on stage and I, I think I can speak on behalf of a lot of seniors that yeah, it, it is a very disappointing uh, situation to be in. Uh, understandable circumstances, obviously, but disappointing nonetheless. Yeah. Um, Adrian, you yourself were supposed to be walking. Um, what's, your, what's your take on it? So yeah, I mean, I think it's really unfortunate. Obviously, coronavirus is affecting everything, um, and that includes commencement. I completely understand the rationale for why they'd want to cancel it, because you know, um, a lot of people's relatives would be there, uh, uh, presumably a lot of older relatives as well. And we all, at the end of the day, I think we all want everyone to be safe. Um, you know, it's just, it's problem. It, it's just a little challenging because obviously it's a huge moment for a lot of us who uh, graduate college. I know a lot of my friends are like first generation college students who are graduating. So that's really sad that they can't walk the stage and have that moment. Um, but I also think that while, it, while it's sad and I, I, I'm, I'm disheartened by not being able to walk, I think that at the end of the day, I actually do understand the rationale because I really, at the end of the day, I want everyone to be okay and safe. So, um, and I can, per, on a personal note, I can find other ways to celebrate. I can still be with my family. We could have a dinner or something because um, we don't really know how long this is going to keep going. But I think um, at the end of the day, I just want everybody to be safe. So I understand the rationale behind it. Um, 
I think that's that's really pretty much it. There's for now, we don't know if they're going to make another announcement about um, whether or not it will be postponed. Um, but announcements have been coming in almost on a daily basis from the school. Like there's there's always a new um, update. There's always a new um, mandate by the school. So we don't know if they will consider it. We don't know if they're going to keep it canceled and then continue on to the next semester or uh, next year and um, allow the next cohort to walk and not allow this cohort to walk. So we, there's a lot up in the air that we're just trying to figure out what's going on um, as information comes in. Yeah, I mean, I think that's totally true. Um, what, on, an, on a separate note, what's been the toughest thing for you guys during the coronavirus? I know canceling commencement has been really hard and we've all sort of been self-quarantined, but like what's something you're maybe missing right now or um, something that uh, you wish you had while this was going on? And it, anyone can jump in. Josh, what do you think? Yeah, uh, honestly, it's just really trying to figure out how to navigate all this. Um, I hate being at home for extended periods of time and so far I've been doing okay. It's only been what about a week and it's been okay, but this can only keep going for so long. And my fears is that really we're going to run out of stuff to do here. Um, and on top of that, navigating a lot of classes that I need to figure out, like I had like production classes that I have to now worry about what my future looks like for those classes. Like, I just don't know what it is, what, especially when we start again, uh, our classes, I don't know what things are going to look like. And so that's really where my fears are right now and the things I'm struggling with because I've just been enjoying this week as like a small vacation. But once things kind of get back to started, I have no idea how I'm supposed to navigate them, especially even though I know the professors are going to figure it out. And let alone the newsroom and not to get like too like sentimental was like a home for us and doing our due diligence for you like for the campus community was to report in and capturing you know not like their voices and I know we have other ways of to try to communicate with people who go to Cal CLA but it's tough when we don't get to have that one-on-one -on -one in person and get to be the face that we really want to be and now we're like really locked behind all these screens so that doesn't necessarily make our job harder but it's definitely a downside to, I think, the relationship that I thought we wanted to build with our community. Yeah. Um, for me personally, uh, like, like Josh was saying, uh, not being able to be at our second home, the newsroom, it's a, little, uh, it's a little jarring, a little disappointing that we didn't really, we didn't know, we didn't realize that um, our last day at the newsroom was the last day at the newsroom. Um, so to not see everybody on a daily basis, um, is very strange. Um, but I mean, I'm here with my husband, so I have like the best new coworker ever. So <laughs> I mean, like there's always that upside to it, but, um, I was able to be there. I, I will say that there are some, um, pros to it. Um, I'm trying to focus more on the pros right now, especially, um, like, you know, with this bad weather and like being locked indoors forever. Uh, as it seems, um, but I'm able to really focus on the assignments that I really want to focus on, like um, assignments, meaning the um, the UT assignments that were assigned on a weekly basis. I'm able to make sure that I'm connecting with students um, in ways that I, I wasn't able to do before. Um, so it's it's nice that um, that we're still able to do our work, that we're still able to connect with the community. Um, not in the ways that we that we wanted to at the beginning of the semester, definitely not. Um, but it's we've been getting a lot of really good feedback from the community saying that like we're they appreciate uh, what we've been doing and um, all, all we want to do is do our job. So uh, it's been it's been interesting having to do it and navigating it uh, through this time. Um, but I will say like as as EIC as editor in chief of the UT, like I'm so proud of our whole team. We've been doing an awesome job, um, or they've been doing an awesome job of just making sure that we're, you know, we're keeping keeping the UT functioning. It's great. I love it. So, yeah. Yeah, I had shouts out to the UT. If you are just joining us, you're listening to Time to Talk, a show about Cal State news and issues. Today we are discussing coronavirus and some of the ways it has affected our campus community. 
Uh, I want to hear Richard's thoughts on, on how he's going through the, uh, the virus as well, but I also want to get to this. As journalists, we want to make sure we are telling the truth, and there is some misinformation out there about the coronavirus, so let's dispel some of those myths right now. Myth number one, there is a vaccine for the, a coronavirus, for the coronavirus. This is false. There is no current vaccine, but according to NBC News and the New York Times, work on one is already underway. Myth number two, gargling or swallowing bleach, taking acetic acid or steroids, or using things like salt water, ethanol, or essential oils will protect you from coronavirus. <laughs> this is not true. Don't do this. I don't know why you would ever do this. The end. But in all seriousness, the best way to combat coronavirus is to wash your hands frequently with soap and hot water, avoid close contact with people who are sick, sneezing, or coughing, and in addition to prevent the spread of your own germs, do the vampire cough. Cough into the crook of your elbow and stay home if you feel sick. Myth number three, the coronavirus was deliberately created by people. Look, I know conspiracy theories are fun sometimes, but there is no evidence it was created in this way. It is more likely that some form of animal passed the virus to humans. There is more information every day, but an article from CNN linked bats as a potential carrier of the virus. However, this is still somewhat theoretical and more scientific research is done every day. Finally, myth number four, a face mask will protect you from the coronavirus. I'm gonna quote this verbatim because I see a ton of people wearing face masks all the time and they're really not that effective, guys. This is from John Hopkins Medicine. For the general public, without respiratory illness, wearing lightweight disposable surgical masks is not recommended. Because they don't fit tightly, they may allow tiny infected droplets to get into the nose, mouth, or eyes. Also, people with a virus on their hands who touch their face under a mask might become infected. People with a respiratory illness can wear these masks to lessen their chances of infecting others. Bear in mind that stocking up on masks makes fewer available for sick patients and healthcare workers who need them. And once again, that's from John Hopkins Medicine. So guys, if you see any myths out there or you see someone doing something that's silly, I mean, I know at one point we, we talked about on TikTok, there was like the coronavirus challenge where people were licking doorknobs and stuff, which is insane. Oof. Like if you see any of that stuff, guys, like please try, try not to spread misinformation because it just creates panic and everything. Um, yeah. yeah, so please don't do that. Once again, if you're just joining us, welcome. This is Time to Talk, the first attempt at a Golden Eagle media podcast that brings together the University Times and Golden Eagle Radio to address campus topics and issues. I'm Adrian Bennett the Avila, and I just got done breaking down some of the myths around coronavirus. I'm joined by my co hosts, Marisa Vasquez, Richard Zuhl, and Josh Latona. Um, something a little less mythical <laughs> is that coronavirus has impacted the entertainment industry, both here at Cal State LA and just the general industry at large. And Josh, who's our entertainment managing editor, I'm sure has a lot of thoughts on that. So take it away, Josh. No, yeah. Uh, starting with campus, I mean, and we're still working on this story here. Um, once we got the, uh, the announcement from Covino last week that all public events would be canceled on campus, that killed basically all the stories for the rest of the week. And what that left for me was basically nothing and for a lot of us having to scramble on figuring out what to do next. Because there was some major culture events that was gonna happen on campus. And unfortunately we lost out on all some of events that would have given uh, insight to a lot of cultures that we don't normally get on campus since we're a primarily Latino school. So that was unfortunate on just the timing of everything. Um, as it's spread out, um, we're remaining to see what will happen with a lot of the stage productions that uh, Cal State was supposed to put on. Um, I know that it's going to be a big uh, bummer for a lot of people in the theater department who have been working so hard on shows all semester, especially as spring was supposed to be this big blowout for them, since they do a lot of their bigger shows like Sweeney Todd. But unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be able to do that semester and when that will happen again. We'll see as that story develops. Like I said, we're still working on that. But for now, that's a bummer on the part of the campus on what exactly like culture looks like at Cal State LA. Uh, as it's spread out through the rest of the industry, uh, I had already had my article out uh, the other day regarding how it's affecting the entertainment industry. And since then, uh, and I told our EIC this, that we need to get this article out ASAP because the information is updating as it goes. Uh, movie theaters uh, are closed all across uh, LA right now and it's a major source of entertainment for me myself included um, and I know a lot of TVF students and again it was 
a way for us, like TVF students and I, to like communicate and develop movie roundups and try to get opinions on students, uh, like what their thoughts on films were. But again, there seems to be a lot changing. And I've, I've already had another article in the works about what you can do at home regarding like what to watch and stuff. But it is a major impact on like, because I think people tend to forget how much culture is like such an impactful, like impactful thing on us because we're so focused on what news is and how we communicate with music and books and film. And this seems to be like a big major asset that like we're gonna like lose for the moment, for the uh, meantime. Um, obviously we can still experience a lot of this stuff at home and we're working on articles as we go to sort of liven up the mood at home. So a lot of lifestyle stuff, things you can read, things you can watch. Um, I'm sure you guys have thoughts about how sort of culture impacts you guys and like, especially in the community of Cal CLA. So if you guys want to chime in, feel free. Richard, what are your thoughts? Well, to uh, jump on Josh's topic, yeah, he's, he's absolutely right, the entertainment uh, industry, and really entertainment even on our own campus has been impacted. I remember we were looking forward to covering certain events, and well, obviously those plans got tossed aside due to the outbreak and the emergency responses there. I remember Josh and I having a, a bit of a uh, discussion back and forth. Uh, I, I remember asking him, why hasn't Milan been postponed? And I think the second time I asked him, he told me, yeah, it has been uh, about 24 hours prior, Disney decided to uh, postpone that film as, you know, uh, the film industry is obviously taking a hit right now in the case of where we live, Los Angeles, uh, movie theaters have been closed per Garcetti's order, uh, also also part, really in, across California now uh, due to Gavin Newsom's recent order. So uh, the entertainment industry, along with several other in industries, particularly the travel industry, um, and hospitality industry has been taking a huge hit due to the outbreak, uh, hence the fear of uh, us slipping into a recession if we're not already in one right now. Yeah, um, I was telling, uh, one thing that we're gonna be uh, covering uh, from this point on is, um, we were trying to trying to think of pitches, uh, just even like an hour ago, I think we were, we were talking about this, but, um, we are so used to our culture of, of being in and among other people. Um, our culture will now be turning into what is self isolation like. How do we how do we transition ourselves into self isolation where we're essentially um, cut off from other people, cut off from our culture, um, which is going to be interesting to see uh, and how. Um, the streaming industry comes into play here because um, if we had, if this had happened, um, if COVID-19 had happened maybe 10, 20 years ago, um, we would be without our technology, we'd be without our streaming services and, and having to deal with this in a very different way. But being that the streaming wars have been taking place and we have all these different avenues of being able to watch and entertain ourselves, um, it's interesting to see how, uh, um, you know, people at home will be able to, to cope with being locked up basically in order to, to flatten the curve, the curve. Um, so that'll be, it's going to be interesting to see how, how that pans out for our students, for all of LA, um, California. Um, we're kind of transitioning into a very strange time in our culture right now. So it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. yeah, I think you've all made really good points. Um, for me personally, I mean, I know this is sort of a separate side of entertainment, but like with all the sports being canceled, like all the NCAA is canceled, um, the NBA, like all the major leagues being canceled. I think um, these kinds of things, these forms of entertainment are really forms of escape for us. and it'll allow us sort of allow us to sort of forget about um, some of the more uh, difficult moments in our lives. And like all that stuff is sort of being taken away, like what with Josh was mentioning with movie theaters shutting down and um, all the entertainment on campus. I mean, for Golden Eagle Radio, on a personal note as the station manager, like we had a bunch of events lined up and none of those are happening now because of obvious reasons, because of coronavirus and everything. So um, we can't really provide that sort of uh, fun to the campus and to the community and everything. So it's tough right now because uh, I think a lot of people uh, rely on those things. And when they're sort of taken away, um, yeah, like I think people, all right, it, like Marisa was saying, it's going to be interesting how we all sort of cope being this isolated and like what we sort of maybe discover about ourselves, which opens up potentially good opportunities as 
well to have some time with ourselves and to really reflect and think about what's important in life. Um, if you're just tuning in with us, you're listening to Time to Talk, a podcast that deals with campus issues. And today we're talking about coronavirus. Uh, and right now we've just been discussing some of the ways it's impacted the entertainment industry. Um, Richard, I know we didn't really get to touch on this earlier, but like what's been one of the toughest things for you during this period uh, with coronavirus? Well, I've been really, for the most part, diligent in practicing uh, self-isolation, just staying here at home often. Um, I'm very lucky and privileged to uh, be able to work remotely from home. Uh, the one downside is, as I'm trying to stay home often, it, you really feel the effect versus going out um, and just also having face-to-face -face contact as I'll be hopping on the sentimental bandwagon saying that, yes, I certainly do miss all of you and the rest of our colleagues in our newsroom. So uh, that it's only been, I think it's been less than a week now that I've been practicing uh, this measure and yet it, 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 I feel it. I can certainly feel it. Um, the upside is, well, one, uh, I'm not eating out as much, so I've lost some weight. So that's, that's, one, that's one plus side. Yeah, no, we, um, uh, myself being a newlywed, um, Daniel, or uh, my husband, Daniel, um, we do not cook. Um, so we're learning, definitely learning how to uh, keep ourselves alive in terms of like um, food. Um, we've been doing a lot of rice and beans and sausage. <laughs> and that's like, that's been our basic uh, diet. Uh, for the most part, and cereal. Luckily, we got like a crap ton of cereal before um, all of this happened. So we have plenty of cereal. We have plenty of rice and beans. Um, so yeah, I definitely, that's one of the things that like Daniel and I get to kind of learn how to cook throughout this whole process. It's gonna be interesting. Um, Adrian, what about you? How are you doing with all this? Yeah, so I'm doing fine overall, but we just got some recent news today. I, I live in campus housing, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm in the Golden Eagle Apartments. And uh, we just got some news today that they're sending everyone home per um, sort of the, the policies that are being set by the governor's office in California. And so that's tough because I have to get all this stuff that I have within like the next couple days and just move it all back home. I'm, I'm from the Bay Area originally, so I've sort of had to enlist the help of some friends uh to help me move back home um and i will, will be far away from all of you guys and will only really get to see you via like video chats and stuff and uh all the friends that i've made here in my time um this might be the last time i see like people face to face for a long time so um that's sort of sad in a way i mean like i'm really um yeah just um dispirited about the whole situation and, and it'll be nice you know there's always upsides it'll be nice to go back home and, and see my family and, and get to hang out with my younger brother and stuff but um yeah it just it sucks it sucks that, that it's gotten to this point and that uh i have to move away from los angeles which is sort of uh i mean i guess it's sort of become a second home for me at this point um so yeah it's just a bummer um but you know i i try to stay positive um and look at the bright side of things. It, it will be nice to see my family again and stuff, yeah. But, but yeah, it's tough. Um, and yeah, just like everyone else was saying, just on a personal note, just like classwork and stuff, like I, I know we all have been working on like big projects, like Capstone and that kind of stuff. Like I'm gonna have to like restructure my entire project probably and those kind of things, but that's just the minutia of things. Like I, I, I'm overall okay, but I'm a little sad right now, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. On a similar note, Adrian, for at least Capstone, my idea was completely dead now, considering everything that's happened. So I really have to reevaluate what I'm doing going forward. So this has taken the whole toll on not just like, you know, what we're going through at home, but now how I have to navigate assignments. And I think, you know, some of us can speak similarly about like, again, production classes and how we're going to create things. I know, Marisa, you're taking a production class as well. And I don't know what this means for a short film that I think you guys may were, were supposed to work on on the last half of the semester. It was supposed to be our final. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, Adrian, how are we doing on time? Yeah, we're okay. Um, to give people a little peek behind the curtain here. <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, we're trying to yeah, I think since we're talking about coursework and stuff, and we're making this uh, 
personal to us. So what do you guys think about um, the sort of recent news that, that's come down that everything's going to be shifting to online um, well, and, and how that's going to affect people? Yeah, so I've been, um, I've been interviewing a lot of students on this one assignment that I'm working on and um, they're not, it, <sighs> Lord, it's such a loaded situation. <laughs> Um, like for ourselves, yeah, like production, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, there are so many other classes that do not go along with online learning, online teaching, um, and just fundamentally. Um, for a couple of psych majors that I was interviewing, um, they, their, their classwork is field work. They have to work out and they, they have to go out into uh, these, uh, they work for a, um, a child care facility and that's what their field work is. They go out and they take care of these students and they get credit for taking care of these students and doing their um, research. They have to interview people for their research and it's, it now that Newsom's telling everybody that like, unless you're getting food, um, medical supplies or, you know, essential, um, you know, only essential businesses are open, um, that's considered a non-essential, uh, a you know, I guess you can call it a business, but um, that's their schoolwork, which is now technically non-essential because we're not supposed to be on campus. Um, so they're freaking out about how they're going to continue on with their classes, with their field work, with their um, needed material to obtain their bachelor's, to obtain their master's, um, to apply for a master's. Um, so it's just, a, it's interesting. I, I know we keep saying the word interesting, but there's like no other word for it. Like there's so many things going on that are affecting our students at, at Cal State LA. Um, there's even a petition to ask the school to um, give the, the students a pass, no pass uh, for the rest of the semester. Um, some students are hoping that uh, they, they'll um, end with the grades that they landed on before everyone went into self isolation before um, the school basically closed down uh, for the most, uh, the school didn't close down. Uh, the school did um, before the school canceled classes, face-to-face uh, -face classes, and went to online. Um, so they're hoping that like before that happened, they'll keep the grade and then basically have the rest of the semester off because it's just there's so much that there's so many moving parts that don't align with online classes. Um, and that's just been almost every single interview I've had has been along the lines of that. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if the school does act on that, if they do take that option up and switch to possibly calling the rest of the semester a wash, we don't know. Um, we'll have to, a lot of this is just sitting and waiting and finding out to see what information comes in. So, but students are very much concerned very much and it's also maybe important to keep in mind how it's affecting a whole generation i got two younger siblings and i don't think one's 11 the other is 16. i don't think they're well aware enough right now about what's going on mm -hmm. especially the 11 year old and just knowing they're gonna have to like probably spend the rest of this year or at least until all this the semester at the very least at home and not really like process it until they get older might like show like signs of like what the the younger generation or like these younger kids may be affected by once they go back in September if this all blows over. Are they LA, they're LAUSD students, your siblings? They're private, so. Private? Okay. Yeah. Um, my brother, my brother's LAUSD and uh, he's a senior, uh, poor kid. He's not gonna be getting prom, he's not gonna be, get, he's not gonna be getting um, grad night, not going to be getting senior picnic, like all these different things that like seniors look forward to. Um, it's just so disappointing for and his, him and his, uh, his uh, uh, friends, they, they're such good kids. They're really, they have good grades. They're being accepted to these great schools and they don't get to celebrate that with them, you know, their peers, um, which is really disappointing for them and yeah yeah i mean yeah it's 
that it's strange times we're living in for sure. Um, we're getting towards the end of the show here. So I want to thank all the Golden Eagles for listening. This has been Time to Talk, the show that deals with Cal State Lake campus issues. I want to thank my co-hosts, Marisa Vasquez, Richard Zuhl, and Josh Latona for being with me here today. For the University Times and Golden Eagle Radio, I'm Adrian Benediavla. Stay safe, everybody. Wink.